This episode is brought to you by Brightland. This is Soursop. And this is Mountain Soursop. These are two different species of Anona fruit. Uh, soursop is something that people really, really like all around the world. In South America, Central America, the Caribbean, Mexico, some parts of uh, Asia, and increasingly here where I live in the US, you can find soursops. They're used fresh, people make juice out of it, people make like uh, different types of dessert with it. This thing, very popular. People really like it. Uh, this one, not so much. This, I believe it's actually from Central America, the Amazon, and uh, the Caribbean, if Wikipedia is to be believed. And people don't really use this. So today, we're gonna find out why people do not eat the mountain soursop and uh, if they should. If you want really fresh olive oil, you have to do it yourself. Or if you don't have the patience for that, you can always try Brightland. Most olive oil that you get from the supermarket is bad news. With deceptive labeling, it's easy to buy a blend or an inferior oil. And even then, 70% of olive oils that you find in the supermarket don't meet industry standards. Brightland oil is the good stuff. It's made from heirloom olives that are locally sourced from organic farms in California. There is nothing added to it, and it even comes in an opaque bottle since light can affect the flavor of the oil. When I have a really good olive oil, I don't like cooking with it. I like to keep it simple, that way I can appreciate the flavor. So my favorite thing to do is just dip some bread in it. So I've got some uh, sourdough bread here. That is remarkably good. This does not taste like regular supermarket olive oil. You get like a little green taste, like kind of like a little grassiness. And what that is, is the olives. You can actually taste the olives. It's not just like oil taste. These are made from different olives and they have different flavors. When you go to the supermarket, you just get one option. These taste different. You can taste the different fruit notes in it. It's more like, you know, buying wine. Speaking of wine, I don't drink wine. I don't drink. And sometimes people bring me wine. I'll like invite people to my house. They'll bring me a bottle of wine and I'm like, thanks. You don't know me very well, do you? If someone came to my house with this, that, that's a good gift. So try Brightland today. I recommend the Essentials Capsule, which includes two different olive oils and two vinegars. If you go down to the description box, there is a link. If you click my link, then you can get 10% off your first order. And thank you once again to Brightland for sponsoring this video. Now, I should point out that uh, my soursop here is bad. I believe the season for soursops is over. However, the fancy pants supermarket that I live near was uh, still holding this on their shelf, even though it is getting uglier and uglier by the day. Either way, this thing was $10 a pound. So I bought a rotten soursop for $22, guys, uh, just so I can hold this and say that this is different than this. Because when I talk about Anona fruits on this channel, very often people will say, oh, that, we have that in my country, we call it this, and usually are referring to either uh, soursop or sweet sop. There are a lot of different species of Anona fruits and they often get called the same name in certain languages and uh, it ends up being really confusing. So I really wanna press to you guys that these two things are different things. Even though this is called the mountain soursop, it's not a variety of soursop, it is a completely different species. So it should be quite different than this one here. However, it does have similarities to the soursop. You can see that this one and this one, they have like these teeny little bumps on it. They're not really like chunky scales like some Anona fruits will have. Soursops get very, very large, sometimes really, really big, and they have like this large heart-shaped um, appearance to it. These things, they end up being rather spherical. 
Although this one kind of looks like it's gone bad, the coloring on it isn't so pretty. Uh, I believe that's what they look like when they are ripe. When I got these, they were unripe, and they were perfectly green. They looked like, they looked totally good, but then as they ripened on the counter, they started to get dark and kind of like yellowish. How you want to eat a mountain soursop is not really how you want to eat a regular soursop. Regular soursop, you want it to be rather squishy, okay? You want it to be uh, giving a little bit, maybe a little bit more than how you would judge like a, like an avocado. With these ones, you want them to give a little bit, but you want them to still be quite firm. I've heard that once you let these get super squishy, um, it's not appealing. I think they get slimy. I'm going to cut this open in a moment, I promise you, but I do have some really interesting fun facts. It's gonna be like 10 seconds. Do not skip forward 10 seconds. Okay, first of all, this is used, but it's used medicinally in order to treat parasites. So not all that promising for fruit, however, people do like this plant as a rootstock. The tree that this comes from is much hardier and uh, tolerant towards colder temperatures. So what people do is they will use the tree of this and then graft on parts of a soursop tree to that and then when the soursop tree grows these end up being more resilient to colder temperatures i think first i'm going to cut open the soursop since this is the more uh, familiar thing and again it's rotted so this thing might be brown inside and full of worms but um you know it's nothing new for this channel so let's cut into it oh yeah yeah, that's, that is a bad soursop, guys. <laughs> if you want to know how to tell if you've got a ripe soursop, uh, you want one that does not look like this. Okay, next, the mountain soursop. <laughs> not super easy to cut into. I'm hitting the, uh, the stem, I think. It just feels kind of like uh, fibrous when I'm cutting through it. Oh, yeah. Very different. So as you can see, side by side, uh, soursops are white and mountain soursops are yellow on the inside. They get a little bit darker sometimes too. They'll turn like kind of like an orangish color. The seeds are also a different color. The soursop is a dark brown and the mountain soursop is a light brown. Fun. Ooh, the mountain soursop is very fragrant. It's got a very strong scent to it. This one has got a light scent. It's got a little bit of a fermented smell to it, but it's like a light tropical smell, kind of like, maybe like pineapple in there, some berry notes. And let's see if this breaks apart. It's what people like on YouTube, right? Yeah, you can see it's kind of uh, a little bit dry and fibrous in there. A little less juicy than a uh, regular soursop would be, I think but it does come apart into like these little little clumps around the seeds. Well, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's um it's a little odd though. It's not like any anona that I've had. Number 1, it's fibrous. As I'm biting into it, I'm hitting this stuff, kind of like chewing into a piece of yarn. little difficult to eat. However, the flavor in there is not hugely objectionable. It's just not great. The thing with this is it's not sweet. Soursops, they're higher up there. You're getting maybe like at least the sweetness of like an apple. Don't make me eat this, please. <laughs> I'll touch my tongue to it. Yeah, sweet. This is like a one. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, but really not a lot. You know, the flavor of this is not all that different than a regular soursop. Like, you have, like, a little bit of a banana taste, like a mango flavor, of a coconut flavor maybe, a strawberry kind of note in there. However, <laughs> it also has other flavors in it that are not quite so uh, appealing. There's a little bit of a bitterness to it, and there's a bit of an herbal taste to it. And because it's not sweet, 
it's a little bit difficult. This also doesn't really have much of a tartness to it. It's not very sour at all. There's maybe a little bit, like a one or two in there, but nowhere near where you would get with a regular sour sop. These things can be quite tart. These can be like, you know, pushing towards like a seven or an eight out of 10. It definitely needs some work, so let's make a juice. So I have two mountain sour sops uh, peeled and cut in half in this bowl here. With uh, very clean hands, I'm just gonna mush this up like so. Okay, so next we're gonna put some water in here. Just try to get all that juice out. Ooh, yeah. When you add water to this pulp, it just turns into like pure slime. And I'm sure that me mixing it with my hands like this is like part of some really weird sub community in the dark corners of YouTube. So hopefully that community finds this video and it does well. So uh, wish me luck guys. And <laughs> yeah, this is not like regular soursop pulp. Like regular soursop pulp would not just turn into slime. So I'm just gonna do this for like a minute or two. And if uh, this video does well, I'll make a video of me doing this for seven hours. As somebody who grew up watching a lot of Nickelodeon in uh, in the 90s, uh, this would maybe make a good toy, you know? When I was younger, you can go to Toys R Us and buy like a container of gack, slimes of various assortments, you could buy floam, all that stuff. You can make good money selling this as a slime to be played with. Uh, if it's gonna taste good, I don't know, but I mean, look at that. That, that's great. All right, got a little bit of the slime. Not really digging the texture of that, but the flavor isn't that bad. So let's, let's add some stuff to it. A lot of recipes for regular soursop juice call for sweetened condensed milk. So it's not really a juice, it's more of like a you know, whatever. And because this is not nearly as sour as a regular soursop, I'm going to use a lime, actually a whole lime, to brighten this up. Cut on my finger, so this feels great, guys. Ow! By putting it in the blender, it kind of made it foam up like a mousse. So now it is both bubbly and slimy. So I don't think, it's not something that can be really like drank. It's not, definitely not a juice. This, um, this fruit is way too slimy for that. So it's not like soursop. The, de the texture of this is definitely not like soursop. Uh, the flavor, oh the flavor. It's like a little bit like banana pudding, but with a touch of pineapple and a touch of strawberry. Not bad. The, the bitter note to it that it had, and that herbal note, the savoriness to it, the oregano kind of taste, like all that stuff, it's, it's gone down. But uh, yeah, that, that texture is, is something. Some people like textures like that. You know, in Jamaica, where 
you know, mountain soursop is actually sometimes used. Uh, there's a drink called, um, well, a variety of different drinks called with Irish moss in it. And it has like this sort of texture, like kind of like a thick slime sort of texture. So if that's a texture that you like, or you don't mind so much, or you have like a use for it, you know, you want to like add some of this to, um, I don't know, like a pudding or something to thicken it up, to give it like a different type of consistency. Like this, this maybe has its use. Like, you know what? I have an idea. That's all right. It's still a little slimy, but I don't think I would really notice it so much if I didn't already have the juice. It adds to the creaminess in a way. So, that's pretty good. And the flavor of this is like before, but the banana element is dialed up. If you gave this to me, I would probably guess it was a banana popsicle rather than a mountain sop or mountain sour sop popsicle. This is the way to go. There's probably some other things you could do with Mountain Sour Sops that would work with it rather than against it. So I think that the Mountain Sour Sop is something that, although not as good in a lot of ways as the regular Sour Sop or other types of Anona fruit, it's not something to completely dismiss. There is something good there. There is a way to use it but uh, just straight out of hand or making a juice is not it. Criticisms aside, it is cool to get a chance to try this thing. It's very rare, very hard to get your hands on, and uh, it is interesting. Comparing this to other Anona fruits and seeing the similarities and differences is really intriguing to me, and I hope that you've enjoyed uh, going down this little adventure with me. So I think that's about it. I'll see you all next time. Bye. If it's gonna taste good, I don't know, but I mean, look at that. That, that's great. All right. <laughs> and thanks again to Brightland for sponsoring this video. I would like to give a very big shout out to AltPod and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I managed to keep this channel going. So if you enjoy what I've been doing, take a look at the link in the description below. Uh, I also sell t-shirts. This is one of them. This is the Mandrake Root shirt, which is uh, available on my website. Link to that in the description as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.